Good afternoon and welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Carolyn Robinson. There is a growing hunger for Western culture throughout Asia. To feed these appetites, entertainment entrepreneurs are bringing Western artists to Asia and vice versa. But sometimes political difficulties get in the way of these huge potential markets. Joining us today are entertainment producer Jack Creation and dance producer Daryl Reese. Daryl, I'd like to start with you. You just came back from Beijing, having seen the debut of the Hong Kong Ballet there. Can you tell me what the response was like for the... Uh... Well, if they had gone in doing classical ballet, that wouldn't have been um, very new for China, as China has explored that field fully and uh, accomplished great feats themselves in classical ballet. But um, working in a contemporary vein, the Hong Kong Ballet really makes a point in China that there's so much they don't know. And it's the very fact about why we're going into China and why China is coming um, to us uh, to bring in the contemporary world of dance, which is a phenomenal entertainment as well as an exercise in what the future will be for them. Okay. Jack, you've spent a decade bringing acts to Asia and China. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about what you're excited about now? Well, I'm excited about the fact that America's uh, broadcast technology has broken these markets wide open. I think it's our greatest export. Our broadcast technology and our entertainment, our entertainment foundations, the foundations of our entertainment, live shows, film, television, and music. We are now beginning to penetrate this region um, like no other nation in the world. Craig Quick, the, the guy that uh, broke the monopoly here with Metro Broadcasting in Hong Kong, who is also responsible for establishing commercial radio in Taiwan, um, has also broken into China now with three and a half hours of Joy Radio. Uh, the reason he could do that is the technology was there to help him, and the attitudes of the, of the nations uh, ch are, are beginning to change, are beginning to embrace different forms of freedom and freedom of expression. Here in Hong Kong, we're dealing in one of the freest communities on earth. Uh, as against a political problem, say, in uh, Taiwan or China, in Malaysia you deal with a religious problem. So we're... Daryl and her wonderful compliment in, 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 in classical entertainment, classical dance, uh, really is the door opener to all of our activities today. Um, they're beginning now to embrace other forms of modern entertainment. And, and here's, this is the season. It's happening now. I mean, for us to be on this show talking about it is the perfect time. Well, you're talking about freedom of expression. Yeah. Um, what about some of the difficulties that uh, governments have presented as you've tried to bring acts? Uh... Well, they don't want Madonna in China. You know, she shows her breasts. And they're not that excited about Michael Jackson. You know, he grabs his crotch. Uh, where, you, where, you can, where you can see that uh, these lines are drawn, then you simply deal with reality and bring them what they want. Um, Metro Broadcast has done that. We bring them sweet, beautiful music. That's what they want right now. The lyric content, surprisingly enough, isn't the key here. It's almost just the tone and the attitude of the music. Chinese kids care about their families. They, there's no rebellion here. They're, they're, they don't care about uh, the military and what we thought about in America in the 70s and the Woodstock generation. As a matter of fact, they're more concerned about their education and their future and how they're going to take care of their grandparents. And so it doesn't work here. What works here is beautiful music and harmony. Mm -hmm. And I like, I, I'm enjoying being a part of it. I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, cracking the, the ice now and then with a... With the, kind of, with the kind of entertainment that, that meets the needs of these people. Meeting the needs of the American kids has been, was, has been amazing. Meeting these, this group is different. Well, what I would say, though, in the creative um, arts, that um, that is one aspect that the Chinese have not excelled in, their own creativity. Mm -hmm. Certainly in the arts, they have copied, oh, well, uh, Western art a lot. But when, when we're talking about dance, choreography, they've never done it. Um, so um, other than the... Um, the uh, works inspired by Madame Mao during the Cultural Revolution, which were all militaristic. That is right. the only form of, of dance creation other than the folk dances, which are wonderful. So here, what we're bringing them is a view toward what creativity is going on in the world today, what it means to be a creative individual like a choreographer, and the in tremendous diversity um, of, of human beings in, in the area of creativity. Have you noticed these limits on what you can bring as well that Jack's talking about? That the kinds of things, do you have to show the content in advance to the governments uh, to get approval? Is this an obstacle? Well, I think it's true um, in other places like Malaysia and Asia too. Yes, they always have to see a video, not only to see the content in terms of a negative opinion, but is it going to work for their um, public? After all, there's always money involved. And, 
and money is a problem uh, when you have to raise large sums to go into China, all right? But um, yes, of course, nudity is not permissible. A certain attitude about uh, the human body and its relationship to other human beings is not um, as open in China. Uh, but I find that um, a lot of contemporary dance as an art form does not have that problem because it deals with the body as a, an expressive instrument um, and not necessarily in, in just a lewd or, uh, let's say, in, um, in an obvious and entertaining fashion. That's really not what the art form's about. So you're both seeing the same, you kind of have to suss out where the governments are at and give them what they want. That's right. the thing, you, have to, you can't just impose it upon you know, you them. Almost, you almost have to take a lead from them. The Chinese and Russians work very closely together. Uh, most of the people I work with in China have, speak fluent Russian. So Russia had, had realized such an amazing amount of foreign currency raised by, say, the Bolshoi. You know, the Bolshoi was all over the world sucking U.S. dollars and French francs and English pounds into Russia. They, it became a tool. China absorbed that, and, and they absorbed Russian technique and what have you. Uh, the phenomenon has taken place, and I've encountered four or five rock and roll bands in Beijing that... Um, Again, they don't deal with like so much as rebellion. They'll, they'll sing about boredom. You understand what I'm mm -hmm, saying? Right. But in fact, in, in fact, the um, um, you said it best. They mimic, and they mimic in their own terms. And I guess that's what we all do, isn't it? So culturally, the phenomenon has taken place, uh, and the, the kids are taking it at their own pace, uh, lyrically and in composition. I don't see the rebellion there, but I see the desire to express themselves. They're, they're, you know, living in small, small quarters is an example. There's a song about it, and it's rock and rolly, and it's exciting. It might have worked in New York, but uh, no one cared. You know. Well, speaking of New York, are, is New York going to care about any of the acts that are in Beijing right now? Is there they anything may, going on? They may right now. We're, you know, again, working with, a, uh, working with the English, specifically, and the American entrepreneurs here in entertainment has been the most exciting part of my 47 years of life. Because what we're talking about today is crossover artists. Can you imagine that I believe within the next two to three years we're going to end up with crossover artists coming out of dance, coming out of, mm -hmm. coming out of song, coming out of acting. Bruce Lee did it. But where is that rock and roll guy? Where's the Julio Iglesias from, uh, from uh, Guangzhou or Hong Kong or Taiwan? It hasn't happened yet. And that's what we have to do. As soon as we make this a two-way street, mm -hmm. as soon as American corporations wake up to what people like Daryl and I are doing with regards to sponsoring events so that we can support the government's desire to have these things come to their nations because they just can't afford it. We're dealing with indigent third world nations that are going through economic developments that they can't begin to even manage. Culturally, they want to share and they want to be embraced. Show us the way is what they're saying. And oh, by the way, if you're craft food and you're selling a couple of million dollars worth of stuff in this country a month, why don't you sponsor a show or two? And that's, that's where we stand right now. I'm on my way to America specifically to address this problem on, in a couple of forums with advertisers about how to sponsor shows so we can bring culture to the people that have, that have brought it, the, cemented the foundations to this open door policy. That's what did it, the, the very classical cultural aspects of these, these communities so that the movements like mine, the contemporary movement, now has a way in. Well, what about some of the political difficulties that you're going to encounter there? Both of you put your reputations on the line when you bring these acts oh, out of China. Oh, yes, you do. And you know how capricious the Chinese government can be. Daryl just did the most amazing tour. I'm so proud of your last ISO tour because you, you're performing miracles. And you know what? I want to ask you the same question. How in the world, how did you do it? How, how do you break through that? All right, ISO um, is an unusual name, and it's not known in Asia, and people say, how do you sell it? Um, what we do is, so we get the video out there, and we make people say, you must watch this, because when you watch this, you're going to see something that you're going to love, and it's going to break uh, visual, sound, and emotional, and spiritual barriers for you. So they watch it, and that's what happens, because it's a product that is incredible there's something about human movement and dance and the physical expression You're talking about moxie, that is universal moxie and salesmanship and that's the key 